Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Orange Coast Unitarian Universalist Church on Zoom. We respectfully recognize that our church rests on a Hachiman and Tongva land. My name is Jan Maybe, and I am your worship associate today. I am joined by Beth Syverson, our Director of Music Ministries, in welcoming you this morning. We are delighted to have two of our, our own instrumentalists, oboist Amelia Russo Neustadt and flutist Sarah Kimball joining Beth in providing music for you this morning. Reverend Judy, our Director of Religious Education, already held classes for the children earlier this morning, and she will offer one for the youth after the service. Our minister, Reverend Sean Wilshire, is not leading the service today, but she has a message for you. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having an absolutely fabulous day. I know you're going to have an absolutely fabulous, wonderful service. So for those of you who may not know me, I'm Reverend Sean Wilshire and I proudly serve this wonderful beloved community. It really is fabulous. And that's what I encourage you to do. If you're new, you haven't quite gotten to know people or you're just kind of coming in and lurking a little bit, that's okay. But what I really encourage you to do is get to know this community. And one of the best ways to do that is at the end of the service, we have these 20 minutes of breakout sessions to get to know people. Um, and the nice thing is, is that everybody in there is in the same boat. It's random who gets put in there. So there's no real clicks going on or that sort of thing that can happen sometimes. You know, when we do in-person church, people get together with their friends and that's totally cool and wonderful. But this way, you get to know new people and different people, which is just wonderful. And everybody's there. So, and this is a really friendly bunch. They are truly wonderful, loving beautiful people and I can't wait for you to get to know them so I encourage you to do that all right without further ado have an absolutely fabulous service today our special guest speaker is Reverend Amanda Aikman the Reverend Amanda Aikman is a retired UU minister living in Everett Washington she is a good friend of Reverend Sean and is very pleased to be our guest preacher today Reverend Amanda is a playwright and a spiritual director. At the moment, she is trying to write her first novel and finds it to be very much like trying to run a marathon while carrying several cement bricks. I would like to invite you to open the chat box. And if you haven't already, say hello this morning. We'll be turning the chat off during the sermon portion of the service so as not to distract, but we'll turn it on right afterwards. As Unitarian Universalists, we have many different beliefs, but we are one loving community. We are bound together, not by a common set of rules or beliefs, but rather a covenant. A covenant is simply a promise, a promise that whatever our beliefs, we accept one another and encourage each other in spiritual growth. We affirm that all life has inherent value and that all existence is interconnected. We strive for justice and compassion in our deeds and relationships, and we are committed to creating a welcoming community without regard to the traits that sometimes divide people. I want to extend a special welcome to visitors. If you are seeking a spiritual home, we hope that you will find it here. And as Reverend Sean said after the service, we will be replacing everyone who remains in the Zoom breakout rooms for 20 minutes of coffee and conversation. Everyone is welcome to join in, and it's a great way to get to know people in the congregation. Our worship begins with the lighting of our chalice, the symbol of the Unitarian Universalist tradition. And as we light it, we say our unison affirmation. If you have a chalice or a candle at home, we can light them together. Please join me now as we begin. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. To dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love and to help one another, this we affirm together. Hey you guys, Leah here. So I must be among millions 
if not billions of people who tuned in to the inauguration yesterday on January 20th, 2021. And I was inspired by every moment of it, but especially wrapped and lifted, exalted, just completely fixated and moved by Amanda Gorman's poem, her presence, her beauty, her artistry. And so this song was born. There is always a light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light when we are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night, to climb this hill, together we will. There is always a light in the dark. When we are ready to see it. There is always a light in the dark. We are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night and be a gift. Together we will. There is always a light. There is always a light. We are ready to see it. There is always a there is always in the dark. We are ready to be it. To see the light, to, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night and be a kindness to you. We will. We will. There is always a There is always a Good morning. The words from that wonderful poem by Amanda Gorman. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it, we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? With these hopeful words, let us join in worship together.
please join with me in a moment of prayer. Beloved spirit, spirit of life and love, we bring all of ourselves here this morning, our pride and our shame, our secrets and desires, our delights and our sorrows. And for a moment, we let them all go and rest in the arms of love. Many of us feel numb after such a tumultuous era in our nation's history, numb and overwhelmed perhaps, but many of us also feel lighter, reassured, hopeful once again, and for this we are grateful. Inspire in us, we pray, a strong gratitude for the preservation of our democracy, gratitude for a new administration already doing the hard work of repair, gratitude for the new vaccines and hope that the pandemic will very soon turn the corner and start to disappear. Gratitude for this community of faith and for all the individuals and groups that sustain and nurture and embrace us. Gratitude for the inestimable gift of life itself. Let us rest in gratitude for a moment, opening our hearts to our own precious selves and to all our fellow beings around the world, knowing that we are not alone, knowing that we are loved more deeply than we can imagine. So may it be. Amen. Please join me. Reconnect the part of me that knows just who I am. Reconnect the heart of me that full of passion part of me reconnect the soul of me the whole of me one more time reconnect the part of me that knows just Greetings, greetings Orange Coast Unitarian Universalist from Snohomish County, Washington, Washington State, where it's foggy and cold and I wish I was down with you. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak with you today. I trust that you are enjoying the prospect of a new year with many reasons to be hopeful. This is the time of year when we might be thinking about seeking some guidance for ourselves using our imaginations, our inner wisdom, and our life experience to create or tune up some sort of plan for our lives going forward. Even though, as we saw in 2020, the world has a way of mocking our efforts, it is still good to have some sort of map or sense of direction for our lives. The title of my sermon is Finding Your True North. True North meaning in this case, that inner orientation that each of us has that keeps directing us towards our highest values and deepest desires. 
a couple of years ago before I retired, I'd been working a bit too hard and was feeling a little burnt out. It was early spring and I was in need of a solo retreat to someplace where I could relax and think. I ended up deciding to take a long weekend for a road trip to Walla Walla, a charming small town in Washington's wine country, five hours drive from my home near Seattle. The delightfully named Walla Walla, a place I had visited only once, seemed just far enough away, far away enough to feel like a real break from my usual life. So I rented a cottage for a three night stay, packed a small bag, put my bike on the rack and set off. Now, instead of looking at my route like a sensible person on a map to get a big picture of where I was going, I used only the Google Maps app in my phone to guide me. As often happens, it sent me off in an unexpected direction. As I got to within 100 miles or so of Walla Walla, instead of telling me to continue along a busy freeway, the GPS instructed me to exit and drive down a minor road. It started out charmingly enough, but soon I found myself driving through rugged ranch country without a car or a human in sight, mile after mile after mile, though there were plenty of dry bushes, empty hillsides, craggy rock outcroppings, and circling slowly overhead in the clear blue sky, yep, turkey vultures. As the road curved alarmingly and became narrower and still there was no sign of a human dwelling or another vehicle, mile after mile, I found myself clinging rather desperately to the reassuring voice of my only friend, Siri, who I have set to speak in the British male accent. So she sounds a bit like Hugh Grant. In two miles, turn left onto State Route 22 toward Byron. I didn't know where the heck I was, but Hugh, I mean Siri, did, so I kept on. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a GPS for our life, clear spoken spiritual guidance that would tell us exactly what we should do as we reach the decision points in our life? At the next intersection, make a U-turn, go back to that interview and say yes to that job. It will be great for your career. In two minutes, do not give your phone number to that charming stranger or you'll end up in a soul draining marriage for 11 years. In 800 feet, stop at the house on the right and make an offer. Your children will grow up in that house and it will be your family's cherished home for decades. Wouldn't that be nice? At important crossroads in our lives or even just in our everyday decisions, we may yearn for that sort of clear guidance. As long as there have been humans, we have had that yearning to understand what we should do with our lives, with our gifts, with the next hour. Figuring it all out is called discernment. To discern is to perceive or recognize the difference or distinction between two or more things. So when we practice discernment in a spiritual sense, we are sorting out values, sorting out what serves our higher purpose and what doesn't. How can we discern? How can we discover God's will for our lives? How can we uncover our heart's truest, deepest desires? How can we live out our potential and give our gifts to the world? The Spanish 16th century theologian Ignatius of Loyola, Loyola who founded the Jesuits, was very interested in this question, the question of discernment. Discernment is all about sorting through a variety of options, sorting, first of all, the sheep from the goats. Now that's not too hard usually. You know what a sheep looks like, you know what a goat looks like, it's easy to, easy to separate them. But then the hard part comes sorting through the sheep to discern which ones you want to keep. Lots of ideas come into our minds, lots of impulses come through us. Some of them, Ignatius believed, are cl clearly wrong and th thus very easy to dismiss. Some of the ideas that come through our minds are appealing for one reason or another, and some are divinely inspired. They're the true spirit of life speaking to us. 
to our dreams, our desires, our talents and inclinations. The difficult part of discernment is to distinguish between good paths, which is the right career path to follow, the one that pays well but is dull, or the one that is more risky but potentially more rewarding. Our whole species needs wise discernment right now, more than at any other time in history, as we confront the massive challenge of climate change, the horrors of systemic racism, and the global rise of authoritarianism. <clears throat> as Unitarian Universalists, we are committing, committed to affirming and promoting the interdependent web of all existence. We don't believe there's a division between humanity and the rest of creation. We believe that we humans are connected to all of creation at a radical, a root level. Therefore, we have faith that any positive movement we make in our own lives and our own immediate environment will affect the whole. If we create peace and stability in a chaotic organization or bring health and healing to our family or create a work of art that inspires people to work for justice, the ripple effects make the world a slightly better and healthier place. For this reason, the more wisdom we can bring to bear on our own discernment process, the more we can add to the world's store of wisdom, health, and wholeness. So to bring this back to the personal level, perhaps you can think of something in your life right now where you're stuck between two paths, maybe an important decision such as where and when to downsize and move, maybe a minor decision such as where to volunteer a few hours a week, maybe a medium decision, like whether to spend your next post-COVID vacation in, say, Arizona or New Mexico. So let something come to you, a decision, large or small, where you're stuck between two or more good options and would really love to hear your inner GPS speak clearly to you with the right advice. Take a moment. Do you have that dilemma clearly in mind? Now to illustrate one form of discernment, I'm going to flip a coin. I have tried this in the past and have dropped or lost the coin. So I'm going to use this coin flip app. So flip a coin and tails, tails, heads. So that's how it works. You decide how the coin flip will affect your decision. For example, if it's heads, I'll spend my vacation in Arizona. If it's tails, New Mexico. So in your own mind, call it. If it's heads, if it's tails. Okay, ready? I'm gonna flip the coin. Before I tell you how the coin flip came out, which do you hope it will be? Well, there's your answer. The answer is inside you already. Your heart knows. One perspective on discernment is that we make meaning as we walk along. There's no larger plan, no God's will for my life, or no where I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to be doing in the universal scheme of things. There's only choice, the choices we make. There are consequences for our lives and relationships, what these choices say about us, and to what extent they enable us to live the fullest life we can. A different language of discernment comes from the tradition of theistic belief in which the seeker lives and moves within a divine field or divine ground of being. The universe is expressing and unfolding a divine intention, what some call the divine will, and others called the divine longing, and we are part of its expression and its fulfillment. At different times in my life, when I was drifting and desperately in need of guidance, I sought messages from God, usually through meditation and prayer. But sometimes that wasn't working for me, so I used the tarot or the I Ching. 
there was a not very healthy time in my life when I would not go out the front door without consulting the I Ching. And I still consult it when I'm in a conundrum and feeling powerless. The thing about the I Ching and the Tarot and the runes and astrology and all those things is that their messages are always rather vague. And I believe this is why they appear to work. They give us a pathway around our logical skeptical brain and into a more intuitive place of knowing where we are in touch with our most authentic needs and desires and gifts. They sometimes seem to be amazingly accurate because we already intuit the direction we need to go. We already know how we want the coin flip to come out. One simple but profound practice that can help us when we find ourselves stuck and wondering what action to take, one practice that can help guide us is the Ignatian practice called the examen. That's spelled E-X-A-M-E-N, examen. Ignatius taught this method of determining God's will by distinguishing between what he called the desolations, the life draining parts of our life, and the consolations, the life-giving experiences. Every night as we prepare for sleep, we can ask ourselves two questions. When did I feel most alive today? And when did I feel least alive? We bring those two moments before our mind's eye and give thanks for both of them. That's it. Perhaps we'd like to make a quick note in a journal. I felt most alive today when I was walking the dog before breakfast. I felt the least alive when I was talking to my sister on the phone. No need to analyze, just to notice. Over time, as we pay attention, we'll realize that our inner wisdom or God is using our daily experiences to guide us towards the pe people, places and experiences that give us the most life and where our gifts can be best used. The examen is a great practice at any time when we're trying to discern life's desire for us, but especially later in life when we're trying to make sense of it all. We can look back over our life to this point and ask, where and when did I feel most alive? When did I feel the most love, joy, delight, satisfaction? And where have I felt energy draining from me, felt frustration, anger, emptiness? We identify the aspects of those things that have given us life. And we do the best that we can to move toward new experiences that share the essence of those things that have given us the most life. Once we've come to a decision, we check it out through prayer or reflection asking for a confirmation that the decision is leading us toward the best outcome for all concerned. The usual sign of this confirmation is an experience of peacefulness about the decision. Every single time that I have not listened to my inner wisdom, I've had the exact same experience. My insecure voice trying to persuade me says, it won't be so bad. I'll be driving away from the interview. You can tell I've had a lot of jobs from all these examples I'm using. I'll be driving away from the interview where I've accepted a job offer that my heart knows is wrong for me, an offer which I have accepted out of anxiety. And I hear those words, it won't be so bad. And you know what? It always, always is so bad. And every single time I get the confirmation that I've chosen the right path, I feel a sense of anticlimax. I feel profoundly, suddenly relaxed as if I were a marionette whose strings had just been cut. I feel physically loose and floppy. My breathing deepens and all my muscles feel flowy. That's how I know I've made my decision correctly. Your mileage, as they say, may differ. Ultimately, perhaps, the GPS is not the best metaphor for our inner guidance system. The compass is. A compass points in one direction, always. It points to the north. 
the compass needle doesn't point southwest to indicate that you should turn southwest and then switch to due east when that's the better way to go. The compass simply shows you the direction of the Earth's North Pole. The point of the needle is drawn toward the north because it experiences a magnetic attraction to north. That's all the compass does for you. North is the only thing it reveals. What you do in relation to that knowledge is up to you. You can move directly towards it. You can turn in the opposite direction to walk south. You can hike upstream along a winding creek bed that meanders one way and another, but always moves generally in a northerly direction. A GPS enables us to not have to think. We're simply told what to do. We don't need to be aware of where we are or how to get where we want to go. But a compass places the responsibility for awareness and choice in our hands, though it always gently nudges us towards our true north. As we develop an increasingly sensitive awareness of what greater or lesser well-being feels like, as we learn to distinguish when we're moving toward or away from that well-being, we develop a foundation for better and truer choices. We find our true north by attuning to a sense of sacredness or wholeness within both ourselves and others. Our nation has veered way off its true path at many points during our history, notably over the past four years. I believe that at last we are making a much needed course correction with steady hands at the wheel. But the underlying issues of course remain and we must, we must be steady as well as we look at these issues with clear eyes. In this era when the forces of division, racism and irrationality howl like mighty winds and threaten to whip us away from our course, we as a nation, as individuals, need to be in profound relationship with our true north. We need to know where we stand in relation to our most cherished values so that when we do get blown off course, we will find our way back and be even stronger for our detour. In Amanda Gorman's words, we will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised, but whole, benevolent, but bold, fierce, and free. Following your true north, your life path may be winding. You may take side roads that lead nowhere and re require backtracking. There may be, and there probably will be, turkey vultures circling overhead at some point. But if you commit to openly, honestly listening to your quiet inner voice of wisdom, you can trust that the overall direction is true to your innermost soul. And you can trust that there will be more and more junctures along your way when with a profound sense of relief, you will receive the welcome message that you are on the right path. And indeed, despite the sometimes scary and very lonely miles of the last leg of my trip to Walla Walla, I did eventually get to my destination. And when I pulled into the driveway of an adorable, welcoming little cottage, I heard from Siri those lovely words, you have arrived. May it be so for all of us. Amen.
Unitarian Universalist congregations are fully self-supporting, meaning that members and friends raise all funds for the operating budget, ministries, and programs of the church. We are ever grateful for your gifts of time, treasure, and talent. OCUUC amplifies that spirit of generosity by sharing one half of the plate we receive with an organization that shares our values. This month, we are supporting Stand Up For Kids, whose mission is to end the cycle of youth homelessness. As the kids are finding their true north, Stand Up For Kids is working toward ending this cycle every day in cities across America, one youth at a time. Their volunteers and staff are there to empower homeless and at-risk youth towards lifelong personal growth and to create in those youth a sincere belief in themselves through open, straightforward counseling, mentoring, and life skills training. You can find out more about Stand Up For Kids through their website at standupforkids.org. There are now three ways in which you can give. The first is through our website, www.ocuuc.org. The second, through an app called Give Plus. You can download it on the App Store from your smartphone, and once set up, you can use it for any of your online giving, including your pledge. The third method is by texting 714 942-1131. Simply text to that number and in the message, type in the amount. As always, thank you for your generosity as their offering is given and received.
always join in singing, we gather together, a song that puts our intentions into words and expresses our gratitude for the many gifts we share. Now is a time when we honor the important events of our life. You are invited one and all, whether you are a member, friend, or visitor to participate in our ritual of joys and sorrows. Perhaps you come here today holding something close to your heart. Moments from the last days or hours that have struck you at your core. If you'd like to honor such a profound joy or sorrow, you are invited to do so. You can do this by lighting a candle at home. It's a wonderful way to honor what you hold in your heart. If you would like to share your joy or sorrow with the congregation, you can write it in the chat. Let us take a few moments in contemplating as Beth plays some music, and then I will begin reading the joys and sorrows out loud. Please forgive me if I miss a joy or sorrow. You can help me not to miss any by waiting to type any comments to an expressed joy or sorrow until we are finished. Have a joy from Rachel Leiden. Today is her birthday. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Rachel. I have a joy from me. I am so glad for our new administration. May our country be blessed. Thank you. I have a joy from Margaret, Peggy. Thankfully, I got my first COVID vaccine shot. Yay. Scott, this sermon brought back all best all time memory, which is very needed right now. Nancy L, a flawless inauguration and a vaccine all in one week. Hope is with me. From Angie, my mom got her first COVID vaccination. For Mary M, sorrow at losing my dad to COVID last night. He was a young 91, still fully there, had a great sense of humor, and I love our conversations. I will miss him. He was on lockdown for a year without complaining. It seems there is no justice. Sorry, Mary. We're sending our heartfelt sorry. A joy from Steve M. Congratulations to Reverend Rika Koffel who was ordinated yesterday. It's awesome. Deborah Q, I am joyful that as of yesterday, hold on, where'd it go? Rika Koffel is ordained Unitarian Universalist minister. Congratulations, Rika. We are so, so proud of you. Tatiana H, joy that my mom decided to permanently move to Costa Mesa to be close to all of us. Yay. Hannah A, grateful for today's beautiful sermon and this wonderful community. Let's see. Oh, um, someone sent it um, accidentally to me. So um, Jan R says, it, it is with great joy that I celebrate my first son's birthday, Mark Charles Fowler is 60 years old today, and he is healthy. I'm so glad. Thank you, Beth. I wasn't able to find that. 
let us hold in love all of the joys and celebrations and all the hurts and sadness, both spoken and silent. Let our joys remind us to be thankful, our concerns remind us to hope, and our sorrows remind us to connect. Let all these moments remind us that we are not alone. Let us join together as we extinguish the flame of our chalice and say together, we extinguish our chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. We are a congregation made up of people who all believe differently. And yet, when we gather together, virtually or otherwise, we make up one loving community. We need not think alike to love alike. If you're a guest, a visitor, or someone who hasn't yet been known to us, I invite you to become a part of this beloved community, if even just for today. We encourage you to write in the chat your name and where you are from. If you'd like to know more about our church, please see our church website for ways that you can get involved and sign up for our weekly email called The Blast at blast at ocuuc.org. If you'd like to know more about membership, please contact us at membership at ocuuc.org. If you'd like to get involved with our youth religious education, you can contact Reverend Judy at revjudy at ocuuc.org. Our community is enriched by its visitors, guests, and friends, and we hope that they find a spiritual home here. We want everyone to feel a part of this beloved community. So please reach out and we will help you get connected. After the benediction, we will have a short period where we can wave and say hello. Then those that remain will be put into Zoom breakout groups for 20 minutes if you so choose. We invite you to check in and get to know the people in your group and welcome any visitors. Today, we have a few announcements for a few groups after the service. Please join the Women's Circle at noon. Grab your cup of coffee or tea after the service and drop into the Zoom gathering. Haven't been in a while? Your first time? <laughs> no worries. Friendly faces are waiting to greet you. Or you can join our LGBTQ Action Group's final viewing of transgender inclusion in congregations at 1215. All are welcome. You can find the Zoom links on our calendar page of our website. Join us for a virtual Music Under the Stars next Saturday, January 30th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. This was an auction item, but you can still get in on the fun. We are requesting a $5 donation, and the Zoom link is the same as the service link. Last, we are having a new member ceremony on Sunday, January 31st, during the service. Those who are being introduced to the congregation, please remember to send in your bio and photo to Karen Kennedy as soon as possible at membership at ocuuc.org. This will be a first on Zoom. And now for our benediction. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Go in peace. Amen. Let's sing our song to each other. Be safe, be well, you mean the world to me. Be safe, be well, you mean the world to me. This service is over. Let our service continue. Thank you, everyone.